You, this is your boy Neobi Teller back with another live IG video. This is gonna be some red pill game. We're gonna chop it up. This is part two to the part one of the curses of the man. So we did part one. Now we're gonna do part two. I feel the most high is guiding me to read from the book of Ecclesiasticus. This could be found in the Apocrypha. Um <clears throat> these books are outside of the 66 canon book. So if you don't have the Apocrypha, I suggest you get one. But Ecclesiasticus is definitely a book of wisdom. And I'm going to read chapter 40 because when I was reading chapter 40 in prayer just now, I just heard the Most High told me to just talk about this as a part two because I think guys really need to understand, especially black men in America, need to understand the curses of Adam and that when you truly understand the curses then you will start to repent to the most high God and then God will correct those wrongs he'll make every crooked path straight so I want to read I don't want to get too into ranting I just want to get through the scriptures because it's like 30 verses in chapter 40 so I'm going to go through each verse and I'm going to give you my commentary, not on every one, but on a few, okay? Now it says, great trivial is created for every man and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam from the day that they go out of their mother's wombs until the day that they return to the mother of all things. Remember in the first video we talked about the connection of mother and the earth, the, the woman and the earth. We had both part ones and part two. And we talked about the curse of the serpent, talked about the curse of the woman, talked about the curse of the man. We said in the, with the curse of the man, he says, because you hearken on to the voice of thy wife, curses the ground for thy name's sake. Right? It says, from it, you will eat thorns and thistles. Right? Now, Look at this curse. It relates chapter 40, verse 1 in Ecclesiastes. So it's Ecclesiasticus 40, verses 1. We can link that. We can link that precept with Genesis. We can link that with Genesis um, 3, verses 17 through 19. All right. Alright, so it says, Great trivial is created for every man, and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. This is based on them eating from the tree of good and evil. And it says, From the day that they go out their mother's womb, because it goes that that part right there links up with the scripture that talks about in iniquity were you created. Through your mother's sins were you born. You were born through your mother's sins and your father's sins, right? So it says, from that day that they go out their mother's womb to the day that they return to the mother of all things, your life has been cursed. Death was never supposed to be. But when you transgress God's law, death is the end result. It says the wages of sin is death, right? So the mother of all things is that you were created from the dust of the ground and you return to the dust of the ground. You were created from Mother Earth. You return to the divine mother. You see what I'm saying? That's what it says. Now, verse 2, it says, Their imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts. This is why you're always in your head. Constantly thinking. Constantly looking for a way out. Right? It says, Their imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. From him that sitteth on the throne of glory unto him that is humble in the earth and ashes. They say, from him that sitteth on the throne of glory unto him that is humble in earth and ashes. So it's talking about making a comparison between a rich man and a poor man. This is the problem. It doesn't matter what your status in this world is. It doesn't matter if you are 1% or you're the 90%, 99%. Right? It says, their imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. So the rich man, he's looking for a way to survive. And the poor man, he's looking for a way to survive. It says in Genesis, when we read the curse, it says, Unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, 
and thou hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. Right? And in sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread until thou return unto the ground. From out of it thou was taken, for thou art thou, and unto dust thou shalt return. Right? So it says, Great travail was created for every man, and heavy yokes upon the sons of Adam, from the day that they go out their mother's womb to the day they return to the mother of all things, the imagination of things to come, and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause a fear of heart from him that sitteth on the throne of glory. Unto him that is humble in the earth and ashes. From him that wear purple and a crown. Unto him that is clothed with a linen fall. Wrath, envy, trouble, unquietness, fear of death, anger and strife. Right? And in time of rest upon his bed, his night's sleep do change his knowledge. So let's say that one more time. It says wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death. And anger and strife, and in time of rest upon his bed, his night's sleep do change his knowledge. A little or nothing is his rest, and afterward he is in his sleep, has in a day of keeping watch troubled in the vision of his heart, as if he were escaped out of a battle. When all is safe, he awaked and marveled that. The fear was nothing. This right here is explaining the trials, the persecutions, the things that we deal with as men on a day-to-day -day basis because of the curse. Right? This is all the stuff that we think about. This is all the stuff that we deal with on the inside because of the transgression. Right? It says, such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast. And that is sevenfold more upon sinners. Whoa. So it says such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast. And that is sevenfold upon all sinners. Right? So sevenfold upon, sevenfold more upon sinners. Right? So these things are the, they talk about out of the heart comes the issues of life. And it says the heart is deceitfully and wickedly evil. So the imaginations of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts. Out of the heart comes the issues of life, right? And the cause of the fear of the heart. Man lives in a perpetual state of fear, fight or flight, survival. Everything is hypergamy. That's the true hypergamy. The nature of man. The, the, you see, God created man in his image and likeness, right? But when man transgressed, he became in the image of the beast. So just like the beast do things to survive, the man does things to survive because he no longer has the image of God on the inside. The solution to that is being born again, getting baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay, that's your answer. Okay, death and bloodshed, strife and the sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sake came the flood. They're talking about the days of Noah when God flooded the earth. This is this is linking to the end time events as well, because it says in the end days, it will be just like the days of Noah. Okay. Says all things that are of the earth shall turn to the earth again, and that is which of the waters does return onto the sea. Okay, so all bribery and injustice shall be blooded out, but the true dealing shall endure forever. Meaning, this truth, God said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. This word, the most red pill truth you will ever get, it's in the Bible. You see this book I'm reading from. This is the Holy Scriptures. You understand? It has all the books in the Bible. I got, I got the, the Apocrypha and I have the Holy Scriptures. It, you feel what I'm saying? The Holy Bible, the 66 canon, and the Apocrypha. This is Ecclesiasticus. This is the Holy Scriptures. 
And this is the word of God. God said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. Because Christ is the word. That's why he said, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. Whoever eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, have everlasting life. Your main purpose in life, your most important purpose in life is accepting Jesus Christ in your life. Or you will never reap the, the benefits of life until you have eternal life because the life that you live is life unto death because you were born out of sin. Let's go back to the beginning. It says, from the day they go out their mother's womb to the day that they return to the mother of all things, a heavy yoke. What is the heavy yoke? The iniquities. It says, out of your mother's womb, you were born in iniquity and sin, then your mother conceived you. So the heavy yoke is the sin nature. When you are born again, right? When you put away the old man, when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, when you're baptized by holy fire, when you're baptized by the water and the spirit, you have a new nature. This gives you redemption. Salvation is so important, brothers, especially in right now in this society as a black man. I'm speaking to you black brothers. Really, I'm speaking to y'all. I know I'm speaking to everybody, but I'm definitely speaking to the black brothers. Because a lot of these curses stem from us. Because we were the first. Right? So, now it says, the, it says, All bribery and justice shall be blooded out, but the true dealing shall endure forever. The goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river. Remember when God said, Your self-righteousness is rags to me. So the goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river and shall vanish with noise. Like a great thunder in the rain. Your works that you do. The works of the flesh. When you are born again. You do no longer do the works of the flesh. You do the will of your father who are in heaven. Because you are of a new nature. Okay. And it says. While he openeth his hand. He shall rejoice. So shall transgressors come to naught. The children of the ungodly. Shall not bring forth many branches. But are. As unclean roots upon a hard rock. Whoa. So it says the children of the ungodly shall not bring forth many branches. But are as unclean roots upon a hard rock. The weeds growing up. Growing upon every water and bank of a river shall be pulled up before all grass. Bountifulness is as, most, is as a most fruitful garden. And mercifulness endured forever. So let me say that one more time. It says, Bountifulness is as a most fruitful gar garden. And mercifulness endured forever. So God always says, have grace and mercy. What we need to survive is not by bread alone. But we need that mercy and that grace. And where did we get it from? Get it from Yeshua HaMashiach. Right? Because it says, And mercifulness endured forever. To labor and to be content with that a man has is a sweet life. But he that findeth treasure is above them both. So it says to labor and to be content with that a man has is a sweet life. But he that findeth a treasure is above them both. So you who find salvation, you who find Jesus Christ. You who come into the red pill, you finding a treasure is above them both. If you're blue pill and you coming into the red pill, you have found treasure. If you found Jesus Christ, you have found treasure. You understand? That's the true red pill, Jesus Christ. I understand? So if you think you got a woman, <clears throat> you found a woman or I found me a wife, but you don't got Christ. You, you, you're setting yourself up for the fall. But if you've got Christ, you've been walking with Christ and you find a wife, it says, a man that finding a wife, finding a good thing. You see the difference? See, if you have a wife, but you don't have Christ, you're going to lose your life. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but lose his soul? Because most times, y'all going to be unequally yoked. It's God that bring a man and woman together. It's man. It was God who brought Eve to Adam. 
So if you're in the red pill, you learn all this knowledge and you're not allowing God to bring that suitable helpmate to you. You understand? You're not finding that treasure. You're finding problems. Okay? So just wanted to drop that in there. It says, children and the building of a city continue a man's name. This is all about a man's legacy right here. In verse 19, it says, children and the building of a city. It says, a man that doesn't have control over his spirit is like a, a city that is desolate. Self-control. Right? Children and the building of a city. Look at how we run cities. Think about the nations. Jacob. Created cities. From the time they came on earth. Man, when he came on earth, he started building cities. He says to be fruitful and multiply. Man's primary purpose on earth is to be fruitful and multiply. If you go to the beginning of Genesis, where God told Adam, right? He said, when he created man in his image, he says, um, and God blessed them and said unto them, this is Genesis um, 1 verses 28. It says, God blesses them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. That's, my, that's man's first command from God. Be fruitful in everything that you do and multiply. Multiply what? Thy blessings. Thy fruits. Right? And replenish the earth. Replenish the earth. I'm going to say it one more time. Replenish the earth. Okay? And subdue it. Guys, y'all looking for puppy dog love, and I said that before in my other video. You need respect. When a woman shows submission to you, that's how she shows her love to you. That's how she shows her loyalty to you. That's how she shows her devotion to you. Subdue it. Subdue her. Put her in submission. Women, if you want you, you want your man to give you certain things, but you're not willing to submit, you, 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 you're playing with a deadly game. Guys, demand respect and command respect. Do not deal with a man, sisters, that do not exhibit masculinity. Do not do not Exhibit leadership, proper guidance, because you're never going to be attracted to that guy. It's never going to work. Okay? Now, um, so it says, children in the building of the city continue a man's name. But listen to this, sisters. But a blameless woman is counted above them both. Why is a blameless wife counted above them both? Because a woman is a man's glory. This is why... When a woman that is a righteous woman, she is a crown of gold upon a man's head. But she that shames her husband is rottenness to his bones because y'all are one flesh. He said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. When a woman be promiscuous and she's having sex with multiple men, she disowns her father and she disowns her husband. And you disown the Lord. I'm just keeping it real with you. So if you're not caught out there being promiscuous and you're blameless, you stand above both children and the building of a city. Because it says children and the building of a city continue a man's name, his legacy. When you are found blameful, you stain that man's legacy. The greatest of men were brought down by women. Samson was brought down by a woman. David was brought down by a woman. A lot of dudes in the Bible was brought down by women. Ahab. So if you're a blameless wife, you're counted above them both. Okay? It says, wine and music rejoiceth the heart, but the love of wisdom is above them both. Guys, you need to seek wisdom. Stop trying to enjoy a good time. Stop trying to go out and party. Look for wisdom. Look for the truth. Get this red pill. See what I'm saying? The pipe and the pastry 
make it a sweet melody. But a pleasant tongue is above them both. When they say, yo, you catch more bees with honey. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Well, it says a pleasant tongue is above them both. Thy eye desire it favor and beauty, but more than both corn while it is green. Thy eye desire it favor and beauty, but more than both corn while it is green. I got to figure that one out. God, you got to drop that one for me because I'm still trying to figure it out. Maybe you guys could drop it in the comment section below. Um, it says a friend and a companion never meet a miss. A friend and a companion never meet a miss. But above both is a wife with her husband. Guys, when you live the married life, you got to leave the street life alone. If you have a good woman by your side, that's your companion for life. That's your body in Clyde. It's right here in the Bible. Sisters, this Bible, yeah, it might talk negative stuff about you women, but it got positive stuff about you women as well. It says, look. A friend and companion never meet a miss, but above both is a wife with her husband. This is why the Bible want women to be modest. This is why the Bible wants women to be humble and not haughty because you represent that man's glory. When you represent that man's glory and that man represents God's glory, you are blessed. Double fold. Double fold. Okay? Okay. Now, it says, brethren and help are against time of trouble. Let me say that one more time. Brethren and help are against time of trouble. <clears throat> right? So, brethren and help are against time of trouble, but a miss shall deliver, aims shall deliver more than them both. I got to look that up. That word aims. Okay. Um. Gold and silver make the foot stand sure. Gold and silver make the foot stand sure. But the counsel is esteemed above them both. So good counsel make you stand proper. Gold and silver can make the foot stand sure. But counsel is esteemed above them both. So the people in your circle can either bring you up. Or lift you down. Look at King Vaughn's situation. The boys he was chilling with. Look, the nigga didn't even get buried yet. And niggas is already robbing him. That should tell you that your council is a bunch of snakes. Real talk. And a lot of you guys be chilling with your homeboys. And you don't know that your boy probably plotting on you. You don't know if your boy is sleeping with your woman. All of that. This is why you have to have godly guidance. Real talk. All right, so um, it says, riches and strength lift up the heart. It says, riches and strength lift up the heart, but the fear of the Lord is above them both. There is no want in the fear of the Lord, and it's needed not to seek help. So if you're in trouble, you have a low spirit, you need to have fear of the Lord. You need to be in the Lord. Stop going into the world seeking the riches of this world. Because, yeah, it makes you feel nice to have money. It makes you feel nice to be on top of your finances. But guess, guess what? That's never going to make you happy. It's never going to make you stop wanting. See, God is the first love. God is the end all be all. God is your rock. God is your salvation. He said, man should not live by bread alone. But by every word. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Because once God imparts his wisdom and knowledge onto you. You can endure it. Forever. Okay. Listen. This is what it says next. It says. The fear of the Lord is like a fruitful garden. And covered him above all glory. It says. The fear of the Lord is a fruitful garden. And covered him above all glory. My son. Lead not a beggar's life. <clears throat> Let me say that one more time. My son, lead not a beggar's life. For it is better, for, for better it is to die than to beg. See, that's one thing I could really agree with. I hate beggars. I'm just being straight up. 
niggas as always begging, 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 but never really putting back. After I don't mind lending niggas shit. I don't mind helping niggas. But you niggas are like crabs in a bucket. I'm going to read that scripture one more time. My son, lead not a beggar's life, for it is better to die than to beg. The life of him that depended on another man's table is not to be counted for a life. If you live all your life begging, living under the roof of another, being at the mercy of another man or woman, you're not a man. You're not a man. I'm just keeping it real with you, brother. If you have multiple baby mothers, but you're depending on your baby mothers and you're not supporting your baby mothers, then you're not a man. Because your strength comes from the Lord. It does not come from a woman. A woman gets her strength from you because she needs guidance. You are her covering. You are her head. You feel what I'm saying? So it says, The life of him that depended on another man's table is not to be counted for a life. For he polluted himself with other men's meat. But a wise man will nurture... But let me say that again. But a wise man will nurture, will be where thereof. This is very important. So when you guys live a beggar's life, you will always be at the mercy of... Of another man. If you always living. To please other people. You will always be at the mercy of other people. God said to be dependent on him. Stop making people idols. When you depend. On Christ. And just Christ. God will bless your life. I'm going to say that to you brothers. God will bless your life. Alright. It says, begging is sweet in the mouth of the shameless. Let me say that one more time. Begging is sweet in the mouth of the shameless, but in his belly there shall burn a fire. That fire is that lust. See, this is why guys always got to have more. They're never fully content. Look at beta males. They got to have a big car, big whip, big dick, big this, because they're never satisfied with what God has given them. Because they always live from a place of lack. And you're always looking outside of yourself. That's a curse, man. To see that the grass is green on the other side. Always comparing yourself to another man. First of all, God created you in his image and likeness. So God created you unique. You stand out. You're trying to fit in. Women, that's what women do. Women try to fit in. You stand out. That's why your dick get hard. When you look at a woman's pussy, is it out or in? See, that's the science. I'm dropping on y'all. A woman's supposed to fit in your world. When you make your when you make your woman your world, you will fail. You'll be begging her for forgiveness. You'll be begging her to marry you. You will be begging her to live with you. And guess what? She can never respect you because she's like, nigga, when I come into your world, I'm just trying to be a part of your world. I don't want to be your world. I just want to be in it. I just want to benefit from what you're doing. That's how women are. Women are suitable helpmates. Women don't come... To, for you to for you to make them the world. Because even though they might like that worship. Deep down inside. They're resenting that. Because they know they're not worthy of that. And this is where you hearken on to the voice of thy wife. And this is where you get cursed. By your heavenly father. Brothers. I got to keep it real with y'all in this video. So I don't care if y'all mad in y'all feelings. It's all love. You want a consultation brother. Hit a brother up. I'm free today. Consultations are $30 per session. Payments are done before setting up the appointment. Payments can be done either through Cash App or Pen Pal. Hit me up and we'll chop up game. Peace.